welcome to Bookmas Day 3. Today I will be doing a crime slash thriller recommendations video. Um, I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, there is one non-fiction but it is still crime based so it's like true crime and it's my favourite non-fiction crime writer uh, ever. Um, it is Christopher Berry D and he does the talking with books. Like this one's talking with serial killers, uh, world's most evil. Um, this is the first one I read. I got it as a birthday present from my mum, and I have like more of them here. But I just, I just absolutely love them, and I'm pretty sure I have almost all of them. I just absolutely love these. Um, he basically meets the killer, and then he writes about his meeting with them and like kind of deep dives into try and figure out why they did what they did and he has like a very cool way of looking at the nature versus nurture like scenario and I, it was just, just so interesting so yeah i would highly highly recommend anything from christopher very d and the first pile we're going to look at is ya like crime thrillers uh the first one is are you watching by vincent ralph this basically um the main character's mom was murdered by a serial killer and she goes on to this like youtube streaming thing um i think it's like one day a week for full 24 hours and is trying to finally find out who killed her mum and obviously he's a serial killer so he's trying so she's trying to like I guess prevent further killings as well and it's just it was amazing and um, I think it's probably more psychological than most YA thrillers I've read so yeah this was amazing it was so good then we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I'm going to read the synopsis because this better explains. I'm so terrible with explaining what books are about. <laughs> Basically it says the case is closed. Five years ago school girl Ad Andy Bell was murdered by Sal Singh. The police know he did it. Everyone in town knows he did it. But having grown up in the small town that was consumed, consumed by murder, Pippa Fitz Amobi. <laughs> isn't so sure so she's basically trying to find out if Sal actually did murder Andy Bell and um, it's kind of her it's like I think it's for like an AP class like advanced placement class it's like her final exam thing I'm not entirely sure if that's correct yeah it when she chooses the case as a topic for her final year project so yeah it's through that so and it's so good i'm pretty sure i gave this five stars and um, at least 4.5 anyway this was amazing and i can't wait to read the sequel the final YA I, th I think is i am not a serial killer by dan wells and uh, this is the john wayne cleaver series i have read the first four plus a novella and um, I'm actually currently rereading the series so I can finally complete and read the last two books. So yes, um, this is basically about John McCleaver. He's obsessed. He's obsessed with serial killers, and there's currently a killer in his town, murdering a bunch of people. And John is actually diagnosed as like a sociopath, and it's just so he's very morally grey when it comes to this and it's like he's trying to hunt a killer without becoming like the monster himself there's like uh this amazing twist in the middle of this that i never saw coming it yeah it's it's incredible i cannot say i can't even tell you like all of the genres because it's a spoiler which is absolutely terrible <laughs> but Please, this is this is my favourite YA thriller book that I've ever read. So far, anyway. <laughs> Next is psychological thrillers. I like adult psychological thrillers. First one is, of course, Misery by Stephen King. 
uh, I know he is a horror writer, um, because I've read it by him, um, but this is more psychological thriller, I would say, and like survival. Um, basically this is about the, an author of Paul Sheldon who has a car accident and then this woman, Annie Wilkes, finds him and kind of holds him hostage when she finds out that he killed off the main character in his books to finish the series and she kind of like make him rewrite it to bring it back so yeah it's it's incredible it set my anxiety off so bad i've never felt anxiety as much as i did with this book with any other book this seems to be like the only one that really set it off i hate annie locks oh, yeah, it's really good though <laughs> and then the next one is of course the silent patient by Alex Michaelitis. Uh, oh, this is probably one of my fave thrillers of the year. I just, it's incredible. Oh, basically, this is about um, Alicia Birdson. I don't know if that's how you say that. Lived in a seemingly perfect life until one day six years ago when she shot her husband in the head five times. Since then, she hasn't spoken a single word. It's time to find out why. Basically, there's a, is it a therapist? I think it could be like a psychotherapist who is trying to find out if she really did kill her husband. And the twist in this, I should have seen coming. Because once you find out, you kind of are like, oh yeah. And it, everything sort of like slots together perfectly and makes sense. It is absolutely incredible, this. So yeah. <laughs> amazing and the other one is blood orange by harriet tice and this is the main character is a lawyer yeah allison has it all a loving family and a career on the rise she's just been given her first murder case to defend but all is never as it seems this you think it's a normal um mystery throughout most of the story until the very end and it takes a massive twist when something completely goes off the rails and you're like what it's and through the whole book you think she's an un and through the whole book um it's kind of treated like she's an unreliable character because she might have a drinking problem so yeah this was amazing actually these two um were recommended by Steph uh over Steph Loves because uh, she recommended this and then I read it and gave it five stars and then she said well if you like this read this and I gave this five stars and I actually bought this while I was uh, down visiting her so yeah these were both because of Steph and they're incredible both of them I, I don't think one is better than the other I actually think they're pretty on par with each other they're just both amazing. Then I guess you would say these as survival thrillers. Ugh, I'm not entirely sure how you would class these. But we have The Woman in the Window by AJ Fed. This could also be a psychological thriller actually. And also unreliable character. Because yeah, she also has a drinking problem. <laughs> oh, I've seen a pattern here. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what did she see? It's been 10 months since Anna Fox last left her home. Basically she has, people say it different ways, it's agoraphobia or agoraphobia. I, people say it different ways but she doesn't leave her home, she gets se severe anxiety when she does. Basically a, the Russells move in across the road from her and she's instantly drawn to them and then one evening um, she sees something happen in the window, uh, in their window, and no one believes her that it happened. So there's like a cover up and then uh, she's trying to figure out did I actually see this or not? So it is a bit psychological I would say as well. So this is, this is amazing. So I would actually put this in the psychological thriller pile now that I think about it, for sure. Um, but this is definitely a survival book. 
uh, thriller, uh, Final Girls by Riley Seeger. Um, basically, a final girl is where a whole group of people um, in one place are all murdered and only one survives. Basically, Quincy is a final girl. There's three of them. There's Quincy, Sam, and what's her name? Lisa. But then Lisa dies and they think that they're, uh, someone is hunting down the final girls. And yeah, this is amazing. I absolutely love uh, Riley Sager's writing. It's so good. It's amazing. I love this. I just reread this this year and so so good. I want to say the next three are more domestic thrillers. Um, the first two are actually like isolation kind of ones as well. Uh, first is The Guest List by uh, Lucy Foley. Um, I actually did this as a read-along for Canon Collective UK um, and basically there is a wedding on a remote Irish island. Um, yeah, what's what Irish coast guests gather for the wedding of the year. Old friends, past grudges, happy families, hidden jealousies, 13 guests, one body. One guest won't leave this wedding alive. And wow, <laughs> this was so good. I also would recommend her other book, uh, The Hunting Party. It wasn't, I don't think it was as good as this one, but it was still amazing. It's still like four stars and up, you know? So you know someone has died uh, at the beginning of the book, but they don't tell you who or who did it. So you don't know anything and you have to try and figure it out uh, through the different perspectives that you get. So <laughs> it was so, so good. Yes. And then we've got The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I would honestly recommend anything by Ruth Ware so far. I've read three, I think. I've read this one, um, The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I love that. I gave that five stars. And also In a Dark, Dark Wood as well. Um, basically, it says, when Rowan comes across the advert, it seems too good to be true. I live in nanny position with an extremely generous salary. What she doesn't know is that she's stepping into a nightmare, one that will end with a child dead and her in a cell awaiting trial for murder. She knows she's made mistakes, but she's not guilty, at least not of murder, which means someone else is. I did not expect uh, the person who killed the kid at all. It didn't even cross my mind. And it was so well done. This is amazing. It is kind of isolated and all of that, where it's just her looking after the kids because the parents are away and all of that. It's so, oh, it's so good. I love this. Uh, and then we have My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinka Breathwaite. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, basically, uh, the main character has a sister who is basically murders all the men she's with. And her sister basically has to clean up the mess. It says, um, this will be the third boyfriend Ayula's dispatched in a self-defense and the third mess that her lethal little sibling has left, has left her to clean away. Uh, this was made in very short chapters and it's a short book as well. And I absolutely love this. It's quick and easy to get through. The next two, I guess, are like former, either like former detectives or former military people. Uh, the first one is Critical Incidents by Lucy Whitehouse. This is the first in the series, I'm pretty sure. A, a Birmingham house fire, a young mother dead, the main suspect, like question mark, her husband, but he's disappeared. A young one. A young woman has also disappeared, but the police don't seem concerned. Desperate, her mother turns to a less official channel for help. The less official channel is former D.I. Robin Leons. Oh, once a high flyer in Homicide Command at the Met, she has been sacked for misconduct and forced home to Birmingham, broke and disgraced. She thinks she's hit rock bottom, but she's about to learn there's much further to fall because the mother who died was Robin's best friend and she will risk anything to get the truth. 
basically there's a lot of like deception in this and this goes on a wild ride it is so good i actually read this um i wasn't a part of the relaunch for tandem but i joined the in and because i found this in an asda and i thought i'd just join them on reading it and the other one is of course the jack creature series by lee child he's x something I don't know what he is, but he's an ex-military type man who ends up in situations or in places that he's not supposed to be uh, uh, by accident and he ends up in a lot of trouble. <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah, he's an ex-military cop. So that's what he is. Okay, so he's military. So, yeah, he's just... Honestly, the situations he gets himself in is just hilarious. Um, I do, the only drawback to these is that I think it, they're longer than they need to be. There is a lot of descriptions of things that don't need to be described, uh, like describing a freaking tree or something. Uh, but he goes into like, such deep descriptions and you kind of get annoyed by it. Uh, I definitely did get annoyed by it, but that's maybe just the way he writes. Um, it seems like it because I've read two of his books now, the Jack Reacher books, and that's both of them have been that way. Um, that's the only thing I don't like about the books, but the rest of it is all action, shooting, and all of that. It's good fun. They are good. And the next pile is, of course, Detectives. Which is actually the biggest pile because it's what I read most of. Uh, the next book is The Dry by Jenna Harper. Um, this is the first in the Aaron Volk series. And basically he returns home. It's like in the outback in Australia. And it's so good. Um, and the atmosphere in this is incredible. You feel like you're there. But anyway, he goes home to his hometown. Um... It's not a warm welcome because of something that happened years and years ago and uh, that the type basically think he's uh, guilty for um, but his friends like old family friends um, have been basically murdered and are dead and they think it's like a murder suicide um, and he actually tries to figure out whether it is or not. This was actually one of my favorite thrillers of 2019 and it was amazing. Yeah, I highly recommend any of Jane Harper's books. I still need to read The Lost Man, but I do have it, so I do want to read it. Um, yeah. Next is uh, actually Robert Brinza. I have two different uh, books for him. We have Nine Elves. This is actually the first in the Kate Marshall series, who is a police detective. Uh, Kate Marshall was a promising young police detective when she caught the notorious Nine Elms serial killer. Her greatest victory suddenly became a nightmare. Uh, basically, because she's a woman, there was a very discriminatory, um, sexist behaviour on the male detective side in this. So I guess I would warn you about that. Um, it makes you angry. Um, I did not like that. Uh, but... I mean, it, the book, but it means the book did its job. Um, 15 years after those catastrophic career ending events, a copycat has taken up the Nine Elms mantle, continuing the ghastly work of his idol. Um, so yeah, she's basically trying to figure this out and obviously the police won't help her and stuff like that. So this was five stars. I, this was also a really long with Tan of Collective UK. <laughs> which actually made me aware of his other series, the Eric Foster series, and the first in that is The Girl in the Ice. And this was amazing. Um, basically, there's a girl who was found frozen and murdered. And there is also discriminatory, sexist behaviour in this. <laughs> and nobody believes Erica when she figures something out. And especially the male detectives made me angry as well and yeah I, both of these are amazing I, I recommend both of these series and then we have Past Life by Dominic Nolan 
Detective Abigail Boone has been missing for days when she is finally found, confused and broken. Suffering severe amnesia, she is a stranger to her despairing family. Lost in her own life with no leads on her abduction, Boone's only instinct, instinct is to revisit the case she was investigating when she vanished. vanished. The baffling disappearance of Sarah Still. Defying the police, Boone obsessively follows a deadly trail to uncover the truth. But when, but even if she finds Sarah, or though she destroyed her memory, will Boone ever be the same again? Um, this was not afraid to be brutal and leave like mental and physical scars. Um, this, yeah, it was basically not afraid to push the limit of too gory <laughs> um yeah this this wow another recommended another recommendation by steph actually of course um this was amazing and there is a sequel uh i think it's called after dark could be called after dark and i really want to read that and um, this was amazing then we have Alex by Pierre Lamette. Um, this, uh, this one is very, very dark. Um, very gritty, disgusting, and basically there's someone going around murdering people. Um, a woman and... Um, I think I actually did vlogs of this last year when I read it and I was so disgusted by the things that happened uh, in a good way um it, this book is very conflicting because sometimes you feel like the murderers were justified I won't say why but yeah is if you like those really extremely dark gritty thrillers uh, i would highly suggest this the detective in this is oh he's a commandant camille verhoven um pretty sure it's set in france um i think as far as i'm aware i think so um basically um kidnapped being suspended from the ceiling of an abandoned warehouse in a wooden cage, Alex Prevost is in no position to bargain. Her abductor's only desire is to watch her die. And the reason why is just so disgusting. I ooh, <laughs> oh, yeah, this does mess with your head. I would say trigger warnings for sexual assault. Um mutilation it's like re if you think of the worst thing it, it's worse than that <laughs> um yeah this is very disturbing but very good <laughs> and then we of course have my i guess two most known authors that i talk about uh the first one is of course jip mcbride uh, this is the first MABS Logan McCray series and it is actually set in Aberdeen which is about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour drive for where I am which is so cool and I have met Stuart and he's amazing, he's funny as hell uh, <laughs> and the audiobooks for these, uh, the Scottish narrator is amazing I would definitely listen to the audiobooks. They're so good and funny. <laughs> and they're just, I would say it's probably one of the funniest um, translators I've uh, read. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just follows like the bunch of murder cases that Yes Logan McCray has to solve and all of that. So it's just, oh, so, so good. And then, of course, probably my actually most known and most owned author is James Patterson. Um, first book I hear, the first book I have is Along Came a Spider, and it is the first in the Alex Cross series. Oh, this is actually a psychological thriller. 
Yeah, I would say so. It was a, such a long time ago that I read the first one in this series. I didn't... I would say it's just a regular, normal, like, crime detective thriller. Uh, Alex Cross is amazing. He also has a PhD in psychology. And actually, Alex Cross is a black main character. And his, so I would say, sassy psychic, uh, John Sampson. Um, I love him. I love Alex. I love Alex's family. Uh, yeah, this, I would say, has a lot of family orientation stuff in it and the shit they go through <laughs> um is very very good and a lot of the stories um in this series kind of kind of twine together i guess so you would have to read them in order even though there is different cases in at least most of them um some definitely cross over so i would suggest reading these in order um it's just I love James Patterson <laughs> and his chapters are so short and it's so quick and easy they're just amazing and then the other series I have by him is the Michael Bennett series um Step on a Crack this is actually the book that started my obsession with James Patterson um yeah Michael Bennett is good as well I it's basically the same try and solve murders you know catch killers and stuff like that it's they're very similar, but Michael Bennett is a white detective. Um, but yeah, I I don't know who I'd prefer more. Probably Alex, because I've read more of him. Um, but yeah, Michael Bennett is good as well. Definitely recommend. <laughs> Although I should say it is a commitment for the Alex Cross series. Because there's currently 25 plus books in the series. There is a lot, and I'm surprised this dude is still alive. <laughs> it's been going on for a long time, and I'm so shocked that, that Alex is still alive. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it is a commitment, I will say that, but they are worth it, for sure, so, yes. But I think that's all of the crime thrillers that I would recommend. Um, I tried to kind of split them up into different things so it may be, be more helpful so it would maybe be a little bit more helpful on what kind of thriller you're looking for whether it be detective, psychological or domestic or something like that. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed Book Mistake 3. Um, my goodies Twitter and Instagram and I know I've mentioned is in the description as always. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!